This science summit is almost a decade in the making. By revealing and giving access to that research, we're hoping to you know, better empower landowners and land managers, but also other types of community leaders like our county planning departments, municipal planners, and people who are making decisions about the health of our future moving forward. Central in that concept is student experience and students getting involved in that research because obviously they are the future. And there's no better way to create future stewards of landscape resources than to involve them in research about the place where they are in. Those of you who have chosen to dig deep, I really respect and applaud and bringing your findings to the table like this for the rest of us to learn from helps the natural resource agency that the stewards of these resources that manage them better, manage them for the future for generations yet to come, pull out these stories so they're understood by all and engage, as Katie said, you know, engage the next generation in this work. So this broad partnership here at South Mountain is critical. You're the citizens and the scientists and the institutions that will carry this work forward. We wanted to really kind of hone in and look at what are the water quality impacts? What about where these trails are actually intersecting streams? Where are the quarries? Why are they there? What are we seeing at the sites? And how are we protecting them? This is a, a, a photo of Ebert Spring and uh, it was our initial focus to um, start to consider uh, effects of the surrounding land use, particularly, you know, the increase in impervious surfaces from all the warehousing and, and other development uh, in the region, with South Mountain being really the recharge area uh, hydrologically for uh, the springs of the Cumberland Valley. The importance of that, I, I, I don't think, can be, can be overstated. I use LIDAR in locating historic air and industry features. I record the data on horse and collier huts because they're all different. So I field verified 843 and 90 color huts. And those last two numbers, they change every month as I hike. I help to work closely with those biologists and to manage species like uh, the timber rattlesnake on state forest land. The Fish and Boat Commission was trying to figure out what to do with this species. So the first thing to do was do a statewide assessment, get people out there mapping these, new, these sites, putting them in the GIS formats and uh, looking where we might need to do some management. We are going to be talking about um, research that's been ongoing at um, Camp Show, as well as some recent developments in terms of the management, both of the archeological site and the forest itself. For, you know, state property, those artifacts do belong to that park, to that state agency. Um, so if you find things, usually it's best to leave it in place and let someone know or map it and get that information. Um, if you were to pick up artifacts from a state property, they ultimately should go back to that state agency. So it was a place that we knew we had to secure and protect the headwaters of the Leechwort Spring Run, a former watercress farm, when we had the opportunity. And we took down the no trespassing signs when we finally were able to buy the watercress farm in 2018. We also put up signage, right, so that folks just taking a walk, uh, enjoying time, out with family or away from family can understand what's happening in this place. We have cleanups, we control invasive plants. Conservation needs conservationists. 